Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. The Resident Evil universe began in 1996 with the release of Resident Evil, directed by Shinji Mikami and released by Capcom, makers of hit game franchises such as Street Fighter and Mega Man. Since the mid-90s, the Resident Evil franchise has spread, with over 20 games, 3 CGI films, numerous comics and novels, and 6 live-action films. It has become a billion-dollar franchise. So buckle up as we dive into the history of Resident Evil. My goal in these videos is simply to educate new fans and try to condense the events from the lore into an easily digestible series that spans from the 1960s up to the events one day before that fateful night in September of 1998 when Resident Evil 2 takes place. My source for most of this information are the games themselves, a few of the comic books, and the Resident Evil fandom wiki page, which is linked in the description box down below. Without further ado, I welcome you to the world of survival horror. Oswell E. Spencer knew all too well that having control now didn't mean it would last. Like Caesar of Rome, allies will no doubt begin to conspire against him. To ensure at least a handful of trusted subjects, the Earl, Oswell Spencer, teamed up with a brilliant scientist named Dr. Wesker near the end of the 1960s. Together, Project W was born. It was Spencer's belief that if a strand of the progenitor virus was injected into the right person, someone with unique genes and incredible will, then a different reaction would occur. Lisa Trevor was proof of that. Her mother, Jessica, was nothing special, therefore was killed after infection. But Lisa was something else. The genetic product of both her mother and father, with a strong will to see her parents again, Lisa turned out to be the perfect guinea pig. Spencer needed more like her. With this thought, Spencer authorized Dr. Wesker to kidnap as many children as he deemed necessary in order to get the desired results. Hundreds of children over the course of a few years were taken from their homes and families. They were raised and monitored by Umbrella throughout the 1970s. While Spencer continued his cruel experiments, Dr. James Marcus continued his research at the Arclay Training Facility, teaching and educating the brightest of Umbrella's researchers and young scientists to become future leaders in the company. He was also losing himself in his own research, using the progenitor virus on his pet leeches in hopes of unlocking the true potential of the virus. In Antarctica, Alexander Ashford, son of Lord Edward Ashford, was experimenting with the virus as well. The virus killed his father, and Alexander suspected that Spencer was responsible. Keeping this information to himself, Alexander decided to pursue life instead of death. Where Spencer and Marcus were looking for further ways to weaponize the progenitor virus, Alexander went a different route. Unable to have children of his own, Alexander decided to create some. Using strands of the progenitor virus and mixing it with the ancestral DNA of Veronica Ashford, the noblewoman who gave rise to the Ashford fortune, two children were created, Alfred and his twin Alexia. They were a scientific miracle, and one that Alexander kept no record of outside of a personal journal. It's Alexander's hope that his children, born from the virus itself, would be immune, and that by raising them properly, giving them access to the best schools, teaching them how to survive and hunt, then the Ashford family could one day reclaim Umbrella from Spencer. At least, that was the plan. But as the years passed, Alexander noticed some odd behavior from his two children, and he saw Alexia's intelligence reach unnatural levels. This will undoubtedly attract the attention of Spencer, and possibly others. Alexander began to regret his decision in creating life from a virus that only seemed to bring death. Back in Africa, Brandon Bailey was successful in pushing back the Nidipaya tribe, causing them to leave their ruins and homes, allowing Umbrella full access to the Stairway to the Sunflowers. With more samples in their possession, Brandon was finally able to comply with Dr. Marcus's wishes and send him more samples of the progenitor virus. The Arclay training facility was changing. Throughout the 1970s, new recruits were mysteriously disappearing. Whenever Spencer demanded word from Dr. Marcus, he wouldn't get it. Sensing betrayal, Spencer returned to Dr. Wesker to check on the progress of Project W. Out of the hundreds of children that were captured nearly a decade prior, only 13 had survived, all given the last name Wesker, named after the scientist in charge of the program. Of the 13 remaining, a young man named Albert was beyond exceptional, and as fate would have it, he was currently applying for a job at Umbrella. This was all part of the manipulation and programming these 13 young people were given over the years. On a subconscious level, eventually, all 13 would seek out Spencer in hopes to serve him. With their first loyal subject in place, Spencer hired Albert Wesker, along with a group of other aspiring scientists, 
one of which was a child prodigy named William Birkin, and sent them to the training facility in the Arklay Mountains of Raccoon City to keep an eye on Dr. James Marcus. To be continued. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe and click that notification bell so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. See you soon.